Ladies and gentlemen, Lynn St. James. I've never looked at myself as someone who was out breaking barriers. But when you end up doing something that only three people of my gender have done in almost 90 years of competition, and that's racing in the single largest sporting spectator event in the world, the Indianapolis 500, well then I guess there comes a time when you just have to accept the labels that come with the territory. Things that, that I've learned about what it took me to become a great race car driver are really very, very similar to what it takes to accomplish anything in life. I mean, first you do have to have a vision a dream out there, a vision of what it is you want to do. So today I'm going to talk to you about some of those things that, yeah, I'm going to tell you some stories about my racing, um, but I'm also going to talk about the things, the, the certain skills and characteristics that I either learned I had in me or that I developed and concentrated on to be able to be a successful race car driver. If you take my experiences and map it onto your own life, it will put you into action towards your goals. Seeds were planted, I guess, to have a passion for racing, but it didn't fit didn't fit the objectives of my parents, it didn't fit the culture, it didn't fit society. And quite frankly, I didn't object or, or, or really battle all that, but I also didn't forget about it. So I went out and bought a Ford Pinto at my local Ford dealer, put a, started at the bottom of the ladder, put a roll bar in it, a five-point seat belt, and a five-pound power, five fire extinguisher, which is required for all cars, not just Pintos, if you recall what the Pintos were like. <laughs> And, uh, and I went and I rolled in driver's school, and you saw in the video that my very first race I drove into a lake, and I got the Alligator of the Year Award at the end of the year, so I hopefully you don't have any alligators on these awards. We have this thing called the stopwatch, you know, it puts us right then and there all the time, every session. You know how you've done, and we also have this thing called the race, and I mean, and if you're not ready, they don't wait for you. You know, I, I don't want you another 30 minutes. I mean, it doesn't happen. I mean, it's going to go off, it's going to, whether you're there or whether you're not there. The only limitations that exist are the ones that we define, that we put a label on, and that then they become our focus, as opposed to focusing on the goal. And you have to make your actions have impact. You've got to be committed. From the moment you get in that car, or the moment you show up at that meeting, or the moment you show up at work that day, you've got to be committed to be the best you can be and make your actions have impact. What I'm about to share with you applies to everyday life, and not just on a racetrack. It's not meant to be just an aw oh, shucks kind of story. Racing has been my life for 30 years but it's also a great model for many things in business and in life. Concentration, competitiveness, creativity, focus, determination, solution-oriented thinking, technology, and most important, teamwork. Communication. You're in the communication business, but I'll tell you, communication is one of the most important elements in our sport. You can have the best equipment, the best drivers, the best crew, all the money that you could possibly spend all the best technology available, but if your people aren't humming together, if you're not grooved, if you're not communicating well, if there is not chemistry within that team, that team will not win. When you don't have coaches and trainers and a lot of infrastructure, observe those people that are around you that are winning, learn from them, but then build that team. Motivate other people to believe in you. You've got to figure out what you're going to do. You've got to go out and do it. You've got to win and do it well. And then you've got to tell people you've done it and not feel like you're just being boastful, but basically those people become part of your team. I can't tell you how many executives at Ford Motor Company after I got them as a sponsor. In many years I had a 15 year relationship with Ford that never included the Indianapolis 500, but when I raced at the Indy 500 and won Rookie of the Year, I got letters from executives I hadn't seen in five or six years and said, we knew you could do it, we told you, you know, you told us you were gonna do it. I mean, that they, they were part of that team in reality that helped get me there. <laughs> you'll see the smallest difference can have a huge impact. particularly in today's competitive world, uh, it takes that extra level of intensity. I mean, we talk about giving 100%. 100% isn't good enough anymore. You've got to find another 10% of effort, another 10% of results, another 10% of, of something um, to be able to, to, to be a champion and to be a winner. Racing is just the microcosm of life. 
my story of just starting as a fan and spectator, following my dream and passion, becoming a race car driver, and then reaching the ultimate goal of racing in the Indianapolis 500 seven times and winning Rookie of the Year, just demonstrates the ability, the power of the individual. If they put their mind to it, they can accomplish anything. So let me help you motivate your people and build a championship team. And together, we can go to Victory Circle.